Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Randall Lamb Roof here, Christian, member of the East Columbus Christian Church in Columbus, Indiana, and I'm here in the home office in Tedersville, Indiana, and I'm going over what we did is, at, uh, on Wednesday nights we had a study uh, a little while back on uh, Galatians, and on this particular video I'm going to be talking about Galatians uh, chapter 6, okay? Now I didn't, I didn't, did not write down all the answers, um, but I got a majority of them. And this is just kind of a brief overview. Obviously, if you want to get all the answers or try to, you know, um, you need to read, um, get a copy of the Bible, uh, start reading the book of Galatians, all of it, or read the whole Bible would be great too. <laughs> but um, to get the answers in more in-depth about what I'm talking about in this particular video, Galatians chapter 6. And again, this is just a brief overview, but I'll give you uh, some of the highlights here. It says, what are some of the responsibilities Paul describes in this passage? It says, carry others' burdens. In other words, you're supposed to help your, your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers. Uh, if they have burdens, help them carry them. Help them deal with it. And of course, watch yourself. Make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do as well. So basically help others and be careful what, and watch yourself. It says, having concluded the previous chapter with a warning against relational divisions, uh, what instruction does Paul give in verse 1? So in other words, if somebody falls away, how are you supposed to help them? And basically, uh, Paul says, restore them gently. So in other words, do it in a loving way. Uh, let's see where we're at here. Okay. Um, what are some of the obstacles that might stand in the way of gently restoring someone caught in sin? In other words, in this question we talked about restoring them gently. In this we're talking about what are the obstacles that might stand in the way of gently, quote unquote, gently restoring them some kind of sin. And the answer here is gossip, pride, and judgment. So you're not supposed to gossip. You're not supposed to have pride. Remember we talked in an earlier video about pride being God hates pride but loves humility and judgment. If we judge people... That's not helping them. That's not. It's not helping anybody to be judgmental. God is the only true judge. God's the only one worthy to be judged. This is. I mean, I think this is a lot problem for a lot of people. They like to talk about things, and of course, pride. I mean, all three are problems that need to be dealt with. Okay. Why is gentleness an important aspect of res restoration? What difference does it make in the way we confront someone about their sins? It says, why is gentleness an important aspect of restoration? And the answer is very simple. Gentleness is encouraging. If I come to you and say, you know, you're going to hell and or you're going to go to jail or you're a horrible person or I hate you or blah, 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 whatever. Nobody, nobody's going to be encouraged by that. Nobody's going to be, in fact, it's probably going to make them want to do whatever they're doing worse. Um... But if you're gentle and loving like Jesus was, you know, like he, like he approached the woman at the well, uh, he said, uh, you know, when he, after he told him that, you know, he asked who was worthy to throw the first stone, uh, and nobody could, everybody had to walk away because they, none of them were worthy, he was very gentle to the woman. And he said, you know what? I forgive you. Don't sin anymore. I mean, but he did it in a gentle way. And the world was changed because of that. So be gentle in what you do when you try to help people. Because being fierce and angry, and you know, it doesn't help you. It makes them worse. It makes the situation worse. Okay. Uh, what command does Paul give in verse 2? Again, we talked about this. Carry each other's burdens. In other words, if your brother or sister in Christ, or just anybody... Help them, help them deal with the situation as best you can. It says, what does it teach us about the Christian life? And basically, as far as carrying each other's burdens, our purpose is to help others. You know, we're supposed to glorify God and help others. I mean, that's our purpose here in life. To spread the gospel. Um, what does it teach us about the idea of self-sufficiency? 
Self-sufficiency. It shouldn't exist. We, we can't be self-sufficient. I can't be self-sufficient, whether it's in earthly goods or heavenly goods. I can't be self-sufficient um, because I need Jesus to get to heaven and I need Jesus to show me the, the right ways to do things. Um, Self-sufficiency in its true form does not exist because I'm relying on Jesus. I mean, God provides what I need. Um, you know, I can work, exercise, have a great job, but if God doesn't allow me to do those things, I depend on God. I mean, the Bible says, you know, we're dependent on God for our work, for our food, our drink. We can't be self-sufficient. Without God and Jesus, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we are insufficient. We are insufficient. So, uh, and we depend on God for everything. Even though, you, you know, you say, I've got a job, I make my own money. Uh, that job and that money and the things you buy, you eat, and you drink, uh, if it wasn't for God, you, you wouldn't have those things. God is the provider. So, self-sufficiency uh, doesn't exist. And you shouldn't try to be, be that way. Okay, uh, let's go down here. It says, How prone are you to inviting other believers into your burden? Are there ways that you could improve in this uh, area? How prone are you to inviting others to into your burden? Um, I'll be honest, this is one I struggle with. Usually we don't because we're embarrassed, we're ashamed. But we should. Um, see, that's, I mean, I think that's part of the problem is we're, because we're, we're embarrassed and ashamed. I mean, I know I'm, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed and ashamed of my past sins, my past mistakes, the things I've done I shouldn't have done. I'm very embarrassed about my past, and uh, it's hard to talk to people about that, but we should. And that's something, like I said, that's one of those things I gotta work on. So, um, hopefully, you'll be able to do better than I am. Um, what does Paul command in verse 4? And that's basically to test yourself, um, to, you know, help you find out where you, uh, where you need to improve. He said, test yourself. Okay, so, uh, I didn't get right a whole lot. Okay, here's one. Here's, this is the last one. I didn't write a whole lot on that one. It says, um, what is implied by the phrase new creation in verse 15? New creation is a complete change. Let me say that again. New creation, verse 15 is talking about, Galatians chapter 6. A new creation is a complete change. So... Well, there you have it. Uh, again, I'm Randall M. Roof, Christian, member of the East Columbus Christian Church in Columbus, Indiana. I'm here in the home office in Tedersville, Indiana. And uh, hopefully this will inspire you, give you a little bit of an education, an overview of what we studied uh, recently. And again, if you're interested, uh, get into uh, Galatians, right here, Galatians chapter 6, uh, or any other part of the Bible. Uh, all of the Bible, actually, would be great. But... Um, so, uh, again, I hope this video has give you some information, give you some inspiration, and a little bit of help. Of, and if you're a Christian, hopefully it will help your Christian walk. And if you're not a Christian yet, hopefully it will uh, inspire you to learn more, to be better, to, try, uh, to find out what God's word is, what God's will for your life is, by getting into the Bible, praying to God, and... Uh, having a better life because of your prayer and your Bible reading and helping others and doing what you're supposed to do the way God wants you to do it. It's doing God's will and doing it God's way. So until next time, I'm Randall M. Roof saying thanks for watching. Have a good day. And may God bless you.